right here with that little hole in it, right? A little hole right there. So that the pine tar can drip into the can. And then here you make a you make a gasket out of dirt. All the way around. So like this, there's dirt all the way around the can. And then you have the tin right there with a hole in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you just pile this up with sticks. Sticks all over the place on this thing. Sticks, 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 sticks. If, if this is the coffee can, you got a bunch of sticks like that. You light them on fire and you let that sucker burn. And it gets really hot. Throw a few more sticks on and let it burn for half an hour. And then once it's all burned down and starts to cool down and everything, you'll just have the can sitting there with that dirt around it. Well, what that dirt does is it doesn't allow any air to get inside of the can. And so um, it starts to cool down. All the wood's burned, and then what you can do is kind of slowly take a stick and dig that dirt away, and then tip the can over, and when you tip the can over, and you might need a chopper mitt or something on to turn it over, you'll see all the birch bark all wound up in there. It'll be black, but if you touch it, it crumbles. And then take that lid off of the, off the ground, made out of tin, and pull your little tuna can out of there, and it'll be half full. Depending upon how much, it's, it's good to, you know how birch bark curls? Mm -hmm. It's good to stuff it in, in the, the same way it's curled. And then you just put inside, uh, put bark inside of bark, inside of bark until you can just barely stuff any right in kind of the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll get a better yield that way. So you never burn the birch bark? You never burn the birch bark. It just gets super heated. Same thing with charcoal, uh, just getting the uh, use of bark. It's actually good stuff. It's just as good as that. If it's condensed roll, smoke is what it is. Pull up mm -hmm. the can too soon and it'll ignite. Yep. Or if you had a leak and you didn't have a good gasket around there, they'll burn up and pipe driver burn. It burns. That's how you make charge fly for flint and steel. Yep. Except on a tiny yep. scale. Yep. 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 And so what you want to do is, is, is do this uh, when the ski is warm, and uh, it's nice to keep it in a, in a warm spot while it's soaking into the ski. <coughs> you got you mist here a little bit. Yeah. This is what, one-third pine tar, two-thirds turpentine. No, uh, two-thirds pine tar, one-third turpentine. Oh. You put the turpentine into and the so birch the also? It just thins it out, so it goes into the ski. You do the same for a birch thing too. The same turpentine. Same recipe, yep. Yeah. And this is, here's a can of birch turf here. Right in there, so you can smell that. It smells the same as, as this stuff. Now, some people talk about a Swedish uh, pine tart. I about that one minute ago about the Swedish. If you knew anything about the Swedish mm. pine tart. And what that was about. I've got some old pine tar for, made for skis. A little can like this is really thick. These are brand new. Really? Got, yeah. Can They're you, actually worth some money. Can you buy it? No. They don't sell it anymore. But you can, get, you can get. You can get. Dry, you know? um, the, the, the wet snow is. <coughs> yeah, but the no wax. What's the difference in the two of these? This is this is harder. Okay. Harder wax in this one. Uh, but they do sell um, this Stark wax that's made for pine tar, uh, uh, for wooden skis. And it's tar. It's tar. In there. Really? And this is purple. This is good for you know Warm. above freezing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they go right through um, uh, you know the different temperatures. You can't use yet. regular ski wax? Or? Yeah, you can use regular ski wax. Um, uh, uh, there was a guy that worked in a ski shop that was coming to the class, and he gave these to me. Oh, nice. Otherwise, I'd never, I, I wouldn't have. That has it. some tar in it, though, huh? This has tar in it, yep. Oh. Um, but then you've got, you know, the regular Swiss, Swix, green, you know, polar. Yeah, I'll tip it like this. Um, Thank you. But, um... What I use for a glide wax is this paraffin you get from this. 
and really? apply it. Yep, and apply it. Get an old iron and drip it on the ski. So you get all these drips all over the place. And then once you get the drips on, you take it smooth them all out with an iron. So, so the so whole bottom of the ski. You put some wax right, paper on it. Right up here. What's that? You just the you put the iron right on that wax, or do you put it on a uh, wax paper in between? No, I put it right on the wax. Right on the wax. You can find. Yeah, stick it in the grooves. Yeah, stick it in the grooves. Here's kind of a. I'm being nosy spot here. I do the same thing with the toboggan. Well, my fingerprints, and you might want to soak more into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, end them. And you can end up with a. And there's a little excess in there. Pretty slippery surface. That's paraffin. That's mm -hmm. nice. Oh, paraffin wax from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Slick. So that's that's the surface area. And <coughs> what I'll do is, <laughs> Thank you. like on a toboggan, I'll I'll put the paraffin on there, and and then um, you know you get a snow like this, and the and the gravel road that I live on gets you know like that much snow. What I'll do is I'll tie this behind the truck and put um, a sacks of sand on the toboggan and, and just go down the road a couple times and it polishes it. <laughs> so then you're ready to pull it. Because then it just like, like, all the difference in how that how the toboggan pulls. You don't want gravel. And then if you wear that out on a portage, you can bring this in the tent at night or parts of it into the tent and melt the wax with the with a, with a metal cup full of hot water. And you're a camp it on there. Yeah. Yep. And use a metal cup with and spread like it on rock and glove. Well, the I always use a metal cup when I go camping because you can put it on the stove and warm it up. Yeah. And that works good because the metal is nice and flat. And, and you can do the same thing with skis because that that glide wax will wear off, but it's harder than the kick wax. This stuff is pretty hard. Harder than polar, even? I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. But it's pretty well, hard. It's, it's, it's too hard to rub on cold, which is what you do with the ski mm -hmm. It's a lot less expensive. Huh. Um, is this a one-time deal? deal? What's that? Is this a one-time deal? This treatment? This pine tire? No, it's a yearly deal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to make the wax and then put it on? Yes, that's why you use the, the, the citrus stuff. Oh. 